Hey YouTube and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is actually a video that I've been wanting to do for actually quite a long time. Beginning of this year really, I really wanted to do this video because I think it's really really important um, and I think it will kind of explain a lot of things to people and like answer a lot of questions that people have been asking. So basically this video is going to be about my year where I actually truly chose to recover. I did a video a while back about my anorexia journey but when I did that video I was actually still very ill and I don't think I actually properly started my recovery then because just things weren't really moving if you know what I mean. I kind of thought that yeah I want to get started but it kind of took a while before I actually did get started and actually I started gaining weight and I started getting stronger and my mind started getting healthier and don't get me wrong, like I'm still recovering, like I'm not 100% recovered, no way. Um, I've still got a lot of progress to make, but in terms of where I was a year ago, like it, it's, it's crazy by how much I've changed. And I honestly wouldn't have it any other way. I just feel like a happier and I feel like I've got myself back, like that little girl that just like lost herself. She's, she's back now and it's just amazing. Like my mum says to me, like the light is back in my eyes and like, I've got my sparkle back. And to hear your mum and your family say that to you, that's, that's invaluable. That is something that, that's, that's like a tattoo word that you do not, I mean, that, that is just incredible. And that's why I've done it for them. So getting into my journey, basically, like I said, I kind of, so if you have watched my video before, obviously explaining my journey, sorry if I'm repeating myself of anything, but I kind of, I did actually get quite a few things wrong um, when I did do that video, because obviously my mind wasn't a great place at that time, but I've kind of thought about everything and kind of realized that, yeah, I did make a few mistakes in that. So I'm going to kind of clear it up now and then kind of tell you how I've done this, well, the whole of 2019 and now 2020. So basically, I was a very happy little girl. I had an amazing childhood. I lived on a farm with my mum and, my mum and dad. I loved food. I was called the little eater. Um, I was always the one who would always get the biggest pasty with my dad, the biggest ice cream with my dad, and food just was never an issue. And we ate big, and we weren't a big, we were not an overweight family at all because we were so active. My dad was a farmer and he used to work hours my mum's a full-time hairdresser working from home and us children me my twin sister and my brother we did sports every single day so we were completely 100% health if you know what I mean so we were healthy we were happy and we had an amazing child I had an amazing childhood and we were a happy family and everything so when I was 13 things did start to change um, my dad got very very ill he he suffered from depression and I didn't actually say this in my last video, but my dad, he, I didn't really want to say this, but it's, I just want to be real with everyone. I, my dad committed suicide. So my childhood was kind of just turned upside down. Um, that makes me teary. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically we, um, we got, had to move out of our family home, um, because we didn't, didn't want to stay there anymore like the memories and just a lot of things happened um so we had to quickly find a house and basically just life was just thrown out of control and I just I just lost control of everything and I just needed something to control and food was the answer like I'd always had low body confidence and I never really liked my body so from a young age I did start counting calories um and I, I had like a little book, um, I did say this in my last video, and I used to write down everything that I used to eat, but I never used to like restrict. I always used to eat what I wanted, but would be like, oh, I've eaten all of that. Like maybe tomorrow I won't eat as much, but I never like restricted or anything like that. And I never wanted to, I didn't like lose, I didn't weigh myself or like try and lose weight or anything. But like I say, when I lost my dad and we got, we got moved out of our home, I was also like at secondary school and that was kind of stressful as well. Um, cause I used to go to a really small primary school and going to secondary school, it was like so much bigger and so much scarier. And obviously um, a lot more pressure is put on you at secondary school from primary school anyway. So my anorexia did start when I was 13 and when I was 14, that's when it really, I was like, right, I want to lose weight. And I, I cause I, I actually weighed myself at a friend's house and I was just like, no, I don't want to be that. I don't want to be that. And that it started from there and I just started restricting from that day um 
calories just went down and down and down and I weighed myself every single day and hoping the scale to go down. When I got to a really, really bad, my mum took me to the doctors because I had like a bad toe <laughs> and um, we were sat in the doctor's surgery and she was, she actually said right at the end of the appointment, she's got eating issues. And I was like, what are you doing? Don't like, because when you've got anorexia, you, you're so really selfish and you, you want to live with your disorder and anyone who interferes with that, like you, you're like, no, 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 you immediately like knock it down. You're like, no, 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 no. But, um, she told the doctor and that's cause I was under, I was under, uh, 18. That's when CAMS got involved, which if you're not from the UK, CAMS is an eating disorders service. If they say they're a helping service, but you know, anyway, I'll get onto that. Yeah. I became under CAMS. And so what that required was I had these people who came and saw me, so kind of like counsellor sort of people, um, all different people. But because my weight got so low, I wasn't actually allowed to go to school because I was underweight. So for basically the whole of year, I think it was my year 10 year, so when I was about 15, um, I wasn't allowed in school. So I basically missed probably 80% of that year. But I was still studying because obviously I had my GCSEs to do the year after and... I just needed to study and I love I love studying and I was never going to give up my studies because I love school so I was at home for that whole time and they would come every single week and weigh me and it was just vile and they never ever rewarded you for if you'd gain weight they'd never they'd always if you lost weight they would like there was one woman who shouted at me so what I ended up doing I used to drink about four litres of water before they used to come and weigh me. So obviously I was making a fake weight and they thought that I was that weight and they thought that my weight was going up. So I kind of was make, digging myself a hole here because every time they came, I'd have to drink that little bit more. Um, and plus I was still losing, so I'd have to drink so much. And if you, there is such thing as drinking too much water that you can, it can actually kill you. And there were points that I got to where my head honestly felt like I was floating like I just couldn't think straight and it like my eyes would go all blurry and my belly was just out here and I would have to like they would sometimes they were late and obviously I needed a wee and I couldn't go because that would obviously get rid of some of the water so I used to literally was in pain and it was just the worst experience of my life and I actually found out quite recently my mum actually told me that because my mum she found out that I was drinking the water because I mean, it was obvious, like it was obvious. And she actually told me a couple of weeks ago that she actually did ring them and tell them that I was drinking water, but they did nothing about it. They did nothing. So they knew that I wasn't that real weight and they just didn't do anything. Basically got a doctor to write me a doctor's note and I managed to get back to school. So the whole of my year 11, which is obviously your last year in secondary school, I was 100% attendance and I got my GCSEs, I went to college and then when I went to college things started to change and I actually kind of started to get a little bit healthier because I loved college, it, I just absolutely loved it, I had amazing teachers, I loved my subject apart from business studies, I hate that, um, but I studied law and I loved it, I loved my teacher and I was just really happy and college I actually did really really well and it made me really motivated to go to uni because I thought oh it's going to make me even better and I just started loving life. So I got my A-level results. I got the results I needed to be able to get into a top university. So I went to Bristol University. And that's when things changed again. Um, and this is for the worst. I studied a law degree. And studying law on its own is one of the most stressful, time-consuming, life-consuming degrees you can do it's you don't get a break like you're never ever finished and it's just so much work and I just lost that control again because I was gone from a top top a star student to the one at the bottom but I felt like I was one of the worst and I just could not do I could not get my head around it you couldn't get the help you needed there was just I was on my own I didn't know anyone in my flat I just hated it and I hated being away from home because I'm so close to my family and it was just horrible. I hated uni so, so much. So during my first year, I made an amazing friend. Like, I don't know how I would have even got through. I literally, I did half the year and I don't know how I would have got through it if I didn't have her. My anorexia got so, so bad and I literally was dying. Um, I was just losing pounds every single day. 
I would do, I would walk miles every single day. I'd have cold showers. I would live on 400 calories a day. I couldn't climb stairs. I couldn't lift my head off the floor. I just couldn't do anything. And then one weekend I went back to my mum's and um, my godmother was there and she's had eating disorder issues in the past as well. And she came up to see me in my bedroom because I was like packing to go back to uni. And she just looked at me and she said, you need to get help. You can't do this. I obviously wasn't all there. I didn't know what I was doing. I just was just like, just, just, we'll just go. So we went, we drove to the hospital literally that minute. I picked up my Harry Potter book in the car and we just, we just went. From that day, I basically put myself into like a general hospital. I was there for, they immediately took me in. I was there for five weeks. So in there, I was put on immediate bed rest. I was in a room on my own because I became neutropenic. People used to come in in masks and aprons. And like, I used to say to them, just please take them off. I'm not an alien. I'm not, because when you, you feel like you're okay, like, do you know what I mean? You don't feel like, oh, I'm dying. Like you're just very underweight. Like, yes, I felt like lethargic and fatigued and, but you're not, you don't feel like sick if you know what I mean. So yeah, I was in there for five and a half weeks. I ate every single mouthful of food they gave me. I did everything they told me to do. And then I, so after this five weeks, I thought, right, I'm going to go home. Like, I've done what they've told me to do. I gained a bit of weight. And then this man came to see me, like, he was a psychiatrist. And he was basically from an eating disorder unit, like a specialist unit in Exeter. He said to me that you have to come to my, my eating disorder unit, otherwise you're going to be sectioned. Being sectioned is not a good thing. Everything is taken away. Like, all your rights for what you want to say you want to do as an adult, like, that gets taken away and you have to do what they say. So, I did what they said and I had to go to the seat disorder unit. In my last video I said I was only there for three weeks but no I was there for two months. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I said three weeks, I don't know. But yeah I was there for two months and that place is not a place that I would ever want to go back again. But when I was in the general hospital basically I was allowed to shower so I was allowed to properly shower like a normal human being. When I went to the seat disorder unit I wasn't allowed to shower. I had to have a bowl and a sponge and I was timed behind a curtain in my room because I was watched 24 seven the whole time that I was in, even in the hospital and the eating disorder unit, I was watched the whole time because they think you're doing things that anorexics do. Um, but I tried to make the point across that I've put myself in hospital, I wanna get better, like I'm not gonna be doing those things, but it's just procedure for them and they have to follow it. See, so yeah, I was put in a room on my own again, the intensive room, they called it. It had bars on the windows, like I wasn't allowed to shower, I was on a wheelchair, I was on bed rest again. Don't get me wrong, I made some amazing friends. Like my best friend, she lives near me now and that she, I met her in there. She's 100% recovered, I've spoken about her before. She's 100% recovered and she, I'm so, like, that's the one good thing I take away from that place. I met her and if I hadn't gone there, I wouldn't have met her, so, there is always a good thing in bad situations, guys. You just have to find it. When I was in there, I first went on a half meal plan and like, that was ridiculous. I actually used to say, I said to them, can I please have the full meal plan? I want to get out of here, I want to eat, I'm hungry. I quickly worked my way up. Um, so I got on the full meal plan. Um, I did everything they said again. I ate every single mouthful of food they gave me because I'd done everything they'd said and I'd followed everything. I was not mentally insane. I got out very early, so I there were usually people are in there for minimum four months, but I obviously got out in two months. I was the lowest BMI patient they've ever let out, which is not a good thing to say, and I'm I'm not proud of that. But I did get out, and I did. I'm so happy that I got out. So when I did get out, I was good for a bit, and things were good. I have to apologise. Um, my camera ran out of battery. Um. <laughs> So yeah, I'm continuing the video now. It's actually the day after, so that's why I'm wearing a different outfit. Um, but my camera's all charged now, so I, um, I'm just gonna continue where I left off. Um, so yeah, I got out of hospital. Um, things were good for a while. Um, I went back to university, did my second year. But during university, I got really, really ill again. Um, during that time, I actually did find my coach, my online coach, and she helped me get through that year because without her, I definitely would have gone downhill again. Like worse worse but basically during that year i got to my lowest point and i think i needed to get to that lowest point to be able to do something about it and reach out for help so i reached out to vicky my coach and ever since being with her like my life has changed um she's basically allowed me to eat again and she started me like i started in the gym with like with her 
by my side but obviously I needed that one-to-one -one support because I, like she's an online coach and I couldn't go to the gym on my own because obviously I couldn't even climb stairs for god's sake so I found Adam who was my PT and he helped me gain mobility for I think it was about a year and a half he helped me with my mobility and stuff so I was literally just going through the motions in the gym and just gaining that little bit of strength to be actually move to be able to move but um the annoying thing was for my third year for uni they wouldn't actually let me come back they were like no you're too you're too ill and I was like no I'm actually doing something about it I'm with a coach I'm with a PT I'm just trying to work my way up and um they still they were like against it and they said I have to get a doctor's note so luckily I knew the doctor um because I wasn't well enough to go at all but I was adamant I wanted to finish my degree I actually knew the doctor from childhood and he did give me a doctor's note which is I know it's naughty of me but I just really wanted to finish that degree and just get it done because once I start something I don't want to give up so long story short I got my degree done I don't know how I did that year it was awful but I managed to do it um at my graduation I looked awful but I was I'm, I was still very very low in weight and I was just still trying to work my way up but I was getting there if you know what I mean um and so yeah I finished my uni and after that I had a, like a bit of a like relaxation like break but I was still like gaining mobility with Adam in the gym still with Vicky still working on my recovery and stuff like that and then as the year went on I was like oh like as I'm getting better like I'm wanting to be an adult now so I don't know I don't it came along I don't know why but I just was like right I need to move out and basically I looked online, found a flat, the first one I, I looked at, viewed it the next week and I literally bought it. So I'm in it right now. I bought a show home and it's the best thing I've ever done. It's given me my like independence and like this is where my transformation has like actually properly happened. So I qualified as a PT as I've lived here. Um, I worked in a gym for a bit. Um, so this is like basically, yeah, last year, 2019. So 2019 was my transformation year, like my from that real, real anorexic person to where I am now. And it was like, I wouldn't change it for the world. So moving out was the best thing for me, gave me independence, getting my PT qualification, working in the gym. Although I don't work there now, it gave me really good experience. So basically what I've done, what I've done this year is obviously I've worked with Vicky. Obviously I don't have Adam anymore because he was back where I lived um, with my mum. So I've done the gym on my own now, but I have, this year I've actually properly, well last year I actually properly started to train. So January last year I actually followed a training plan, trained muscle groups twice a week and actually properly started to lift some weights. So I actually started weight training last year and I've been doing it for like a year and a month now and I absolutely love it and it is changed my life it is i'm sure you probably all know by now <laughs> that's all i ever talk about and during this year this was the time where i actually realized that i actually want to compete so that's where the competing's come from because i've just learned so much about it i'm always looking at it i'm always wanting to get better and, and everything like that i just found a love for competing and all this hard work that i've put in i want to like show it on i want to like show it and be proud of myself so stepping on stage and doing a show is like the best way for me to do that and i just it literally gives me goosebumps like i always say every time i talk about it so like yeah my training has just got so much better i like over the year like my intensity's got more and more more and more my form's got so much better and i've just learned so much more about training as my training's got more intense and obviously as i've like slowly gained weight and gained more muscle mass and stuff like that Obviously I've gained fat as well, but that was needed. Like I'm glad I've gained fat as well because I needed that extra fat because um, everyone needs body fat. With my nutrition, obviously it's had to go up. So what we, Vicky has done is we've slowly increased, like judging on what my weight is, how I'm feeling and everything like that. And it's all been slow and steady. And I think that's the best way because slow and steady, you're not gonna be like over overwhelmed by it and you're not gonna cause any issues with your body. Um, and I feel like that's the best way. Yes, it does take longer, but overall in the long term, it's much, be much better, I think, in my personal opinion. So in terms of my nutrition, I, I, like, I've, I'm really, I got really into it and I really take my nutrition seriously. So every meal is like specific to my goals and I kind of eat, I eat consistent meals because I know they work for me and I've reduced my vegetables now. So my digestion is so much better. I know so much about nutrition, like I'm studying nutrition courses to become qualified in it. Um, and yeah, this year is just literally, I'm such a different person to what I was like the beginning of last year. 
Like I was that anorexic girl and now I'm like that completely different person and I've made so many friends in the gym along the way. Um, I did online, co I've been doing online coaching and my clients are absolutely incredible. And it's just so nice that like everyone's doing it together and it's like a massive team. And yeah, it's just been incredible this last year. And like, it's not like a complicated process. Yes, it's a hard process, but at the end of the day, it's all I've done is lift some weights and eat a lot of food. That's literally all I've done. And it's obviously it's taken this whole year to kind of like get to where I am now. And I've still got a long, long way to go, but I'm gonna continue doing that. And it has taxed me mentally, but it's made me better mentally. So I'm not only better physically, I'm better mentally as well. And I just can't wait to see what the future holds. However, the last thing that I really, really want to improve on um, actually, there's a couple things, is um, my bones. So my bones are still actually really, really bad. I um, had a bone, so I had that bone scan that I mentioned a while back and the results weren't good. So I'm working on that. I'm on supplements and stuff like that for that. And um, my hormones, I want those to kick into place. Um, I'm on medication for that as well. And the last thing, is my hands because i've had a lot of people commenting saying what's wrong with your hands why are they so red basically when i had my eating disorder i suffered from ocd as well because once you get really really low everything in your life you you get more and more controlling so basically i got about like cleaning myself and washing my hands and i got obsessed with being clean so I've washed all the nutrients out of my hands and they are the last thing to heal. So I get like chill blains and dry skin and it just, they just won't heal, but they're like the last thing, which is really annoying. Um, I put cream on them all the time, but the annoying thing is I work, the, my job, that my other job that I do, it's, it's really, really cold. So it doesn't really help, but you know, we're getting there. It will, I'm just gonna persevere and keep putting cream on. And obviously the more, like weight I gain, the healthier I get, hopefully like my hands will come back to nice and normal and nice and soft <laughs> and look normal, not like a 90 year old. But yeah, so that was basically my transformation year. Like it's simple really guys, it's just, it's well, it's not simple. The actual process is simple, but in terms of the mental aspect, that's the hard part. Like that is the bit that's the hardest and you have to push through every single day. Like I still struggle every single day. Don't get me wrong, like every day is a battle for me. And like the other day I had a really bad day and I just was like, I want to give up. I want to give up. I hate myself. Da, 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 da. But it's, it's, you just have to keep pushing through those hard times because those times are the times that make you stronger. And I feel so much happier now. I spoke to my mom. Um, I went to the gym the next day, I had an amazing session and yeah, I'm just going to keep pushing forward. And I know there's so many more like ups and downs to come and I've still got a lot of things to get right in my mind, but I'm so willing to do it and I want to do it. And next year, I will be stepping on that stage. I will be showing all the effort that I've put into this recovery on that stage in my little bikini um, with my tan. And I'm just gonna be loving life. And I just can't wait. I just can't wait. But yeah, so that was literally that everything. Um, sorry if this video is really, really long, but I just kind of wanted to clear everything up because my, my last one was really, really unclear. Um, so yeah. I hope that kind of gives you a bit more information about me. And if you've got any questions, like anything, like I'm really, really open and I'm not, like I'm really honest and I don't hide anything. So ask me anything and I will get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, so if you did enjoy the video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you want to follow my journey more, um, just follow me along the way, um, this year of growth and then my prep next year, subscribe to my channel and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.